real deal. When you can prevent present shit like that, we'll we'll talk. That is a standard to get into team. That is deal. a standard right there. That was quite awesome. Yeah. All right. Let's do Survivor Series. I'll let uh, you get started here. Well, I tend to business. Team Miz of The Miz and Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre and Sheamus and Jack Swagger versus Team Morrison of John Morrison and Nathan Board and Shelton Benjamin and Matt Hardy and Finley. Uh, do we need to recap every single finish in these things? <laughs> You've already put me to sleep. <laughs> Let me talk a little bit about this uh, match right here, and then we'll uh, move on. We don't have to do every single stupid. We just talk about the main moments, such as Scott Armstrong yes. getting kneed in the back of the head by clumsy Sheamus and getting a concussion, the highlight of which was when he fell down in the fetal position and raised the dreaded X sign for himself. So, yeah, ended up with... Uh, I-, I thought the highlight was that... We have all seen when there's a ref bump in a match... Uh, in WrestleMania, for example, an Undertaker versus Edge... I think that was the match. It was at, in Florida. But there was a ref bump, and the ref was basically knocked out cold. And to get a second referee in, they had to have Charles Robinson run the length of the ramp as fast as he possibly could, which was still a good 15 seconds. It was a long run he made. This time, a ref was legitimately knocked out. They had no idea it was coming, and yet they were still prepared with another, another referee in seconds. Yeah. That made me laugh. Yeah. Came down to Morrison, Drew, Miz, and Sheamus, so it was three on one, and Morrison made a comeback, knocked out Miz and Drew, and then Sheamus caught him on a springboard and hit the razor's edge for the pin, and good match, and I, at the time I wrote, I hope it leads to something for the winners, and it sure as shit led to something for Sheamus. Indeed. So indeed. good for him. And not only did the three young guys win at the end, but I believe they had all the eliminations for their team, and they all got at least one. So they all got to look good, and not a great wrestling match or anything, but accomplished what it set out to, which is make these three guys look good. I wrote, Christian MVP, Truth, Mark Henry, and Kofi all had a meeting, where after much discussion, the Black Brothers accepted the white guy into the fold. At which point, someone on the board said, That's not what happened! Well, what happened, Vince? I wrote, there is a horrible, in all caps, skit involving Christian and his black friends. That's all I wrote. This sucked. I don't care more specifically how to describe it. Universally, everyone there is agreed There was a wretched to, segment sucked. involving Christian and the other members of his team who happened to be black. Big Dave against Ray. I thought this was awesome for the... It was only six minutes. But for six minutes, it was great. Ray ran wild on Dave and beat the holy hell out of him. And Dave bumped around like Ray weighed 800 pounds, yes. which was something else, sold for him like a motherfucker, and finally got his knee up on a splash, and then destroyed Ray with a spine buster and a series of power bombs. Place went absolutely nuts for Dave, since he lives in Washington, D.C., and that's where the pay-per-view was. And they did the old ref stoppage finish, which I thought was awesome, because... Once you establish that the ref can stop a match if a guy's been beaten too badly, you've got a brand new, you've got a brand new moment in matches, mm-hmm. which in which there is great drama. Because will the ref stop the match? Will the ref not stop the match? Who knows? They, they could have in Dave versus Undertaker. Dave can be kicking the Undertaker's ass and hit a power bomb, and the ref might suddenly jump in the middle and tease waving it off, and then Taker can like shove him aside or something. There's a lot, of, a lot of different ways you can go here to yeah. build drama. You've uh, talked before about how Ray's been getting booed since the uh, his suspension, and I've kind of disagreed with you, but there's a point in here where Eddie went to go up to the top rope, and before he... Eddie? Did, oh, I'm sorry. Well, Ray did the Eddie Guerrero shoulder wiggle, and everyone booed. So the, people are tired of hearing seeing the Eddie Guerrero stuff in the Ray Mysterio Dave Batista feud, so hopefully they will just let it lie. Horton did a promo and gave his team a pep talk. Which wasn't very peppy. It's really, he just berated them. Yeah. It was a Tim Flowers pep talk, really. It really was. So then Punk got lippy. Everyone told him to shut up. Basically, he said that Orton was telling them, "I expect you guys to be champions tonight." And then Orton, and then uh, Punk said, "Well, we expect you not to have been humiliated by Kobe Kingston." Punk, Regal, Legacy, and Orton against Kofi, Mark Henry, MVP, R Truth, and Christian. Three and three quarter stars. This match ruled, and. I want to see Orton and Christian in a feud. I think it would be awesome. Came down to Kofi versus Punk and Orton. Orton immediately bailed outside, not wanting anything to do with this uh, feller here. And Punk and Kofi worked for about six minutes together. They just had a straight singles match. And finally, Punk, uh, I guess, 
Orton distracted Kofi. Punk rolled him up. Kofi reversed it, got the pin. Orton immediately hit the ring to blindside him. And Kofi was waiting and hit his wacky kick for the pinfall, and the place went crazy. It was an awesome finish. I was gobsmacked that they did this right. And we were watching at Craig's with four or five people there, and there was actually applause. There was applause (laughs) at this fucking finish. That is how flabbergasted everybody was that they did this right. So, way to go, WWE. My computer just had a meltdown. I'm currently looking at a blue screen. I'm trying to think of the last time there was applause when we were watching a pay-per-view for something. I do remember this match got really, really awesome when it came down to the tag match of Punk and Orton versus Christian and Kofi. And uh, people were totally into it when it was just Christian and Orton. They worked together well. It was something new. People that were very excited when Christian almost got the win with the when got, almost got the win with the unprettier or whatever the hell they call it now the kill switch. And then Orton, of course, at the RKO and pinned him. And then Orton being afraid to get in the ring with Kofi was great. Kofi versus C, uh, versus Punk was fun for a while, and then he got the roll up, and then instantly hit the kick for the win. And yes, as noted, they could not have done this any better, and it was perfect. Undertaker, Jericho, and Big Show, this was not perfect. I gave it a star and a half. I read Dave's report, and it said, good match. And I thought, huh? Not sure what match he was watching. I did not see a good match. I saw a good match ruined by the Big Show. God bless the guy. His knee is all fucked up, and he can't move. But uh, he couldn't do a thing here. He dragged the match down. It was just long... And stuff happened, and finally, Jericho, I guess, uh, what happened? Undertaker gave Show, I'm sorry, Show gave Jericho the knockout punch, and then signaled for the choke slam on Taker, and Taker turned it into the Goga Plata for the submission, and uh, finish was good, the rest of it, lame. Well, my computer's dead, that sucks. Um, How did your computer die? Did you restart it? I was it? looking at my notes, and suddenly I was looking at a blue screen saying there was an error in Windows... And it has been shut down. Please restart. And now I'm trying to restart. And it's, I don't know what it's doing, but it's a, a black screen with white letters that keeps reloading itself over and over again. So it's certainly not going to be working by the time this show is done. Hmm. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little distracted. So, show versus Jericho versus Undertaker. Wait a second. I want you to t- t- fix this computer on air. All right. I have just nothing to fix. There's no, here, here's what's happening. Hold on. Let, let the computer guy come over and deal with this problem. Okay. Let me see that. <clears throat> Want me to read what it says? Does it just keep doing that over and over again? It does that over and over again. Where's the shut up button? That one right there. Brian, the computer guy, is restarting the laptop. He has shut it down. Let it breathe for a while. We're letting it breathe for a while, he says. Rebooting, everybody. It's doing... That's what it did last time. It says, Intel UNDI PXE-2.0, build 082, copyright 97 to 2000 Intel Corporation. For Realtek RTL 8139X, 8130810X, PCI Fast Ethernet Controller V2.13. Okay, it does this over and over. The last message... Media test failure check. Oh, let's see what we got here. This is more exciting than the Jericho Show Undertaker match. A uh, guaranteed. Show was. That's what we're demonstrating here. I do recall Show being on one leg, which was funny because he was not on SmackDown, so I don't know what happened between here and there. But uh, I also recall Undertaker or Jericho going for a tombstone on the Undertaker, and of course Taker reversing it, and then Jericho or Big Show punched the Undertaker in the face through Jericho's legs. That was great. And then in the end, all that really matters is. Taker pinned Jericho, so he is still champion. And that was that. Let's see here. Well, it appears to uh, have a lot of... Uh, it's all over Google here. All right. I keep getting... Uh, da, 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 what does this say here? Most positive that you have a bad hard drive. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. PXC means pre-boot execution environment. You see the semester with the laptop trying to boot from a remote server using the network card. Let's see if there's a solution here. Now, when the hard drive has failed, the laptop cannot detect it. It tries to boot from the next available device, the network card. Your laptop is not configured to boot from a remote server using the network card. That's why you're getting this error. You have to replace the hard drive and reinstall the operating system. No buys. That's just one guy's opinion. 
Hmm. <laughs> it's a Toshiba, I presume. This is a Compaq. Oh, Compaq. Hmm. Hmm. Check Compaq. Yep, we're doing this all in the air, everybody. Who knows? Someone listening to this right now may have a similar problem. Honestly, I suspect there are a couple dozen people la- listening to this thinking, what idiots we are. And there's probably like a button I need to push. Or they're probably uh, emailing you right now saying, Vince, don't kill yourself. It's going to be okay. Oddly enough, this doesn't bother me. Really? You know why? Because you, not... u- you only use it for impact? No, I actually use it for a lot. No. Oh. But this is not my fault. I That's didn't true. do anything to make this happen. That's true. When I lose my phone... Well, you phone, bought a $200 laptop. I, did, I'm, I am out perhaps $200. Well, you just got to put a new hard drive in there. I don't know how much. That's it's probably. Cost. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's keep Tony going here, and I'll I'll keep investigating as we talk. I'll just leave this running in front of me here. Layla, Michelle, Alicia, Beth, and Jillian. <laughs> it's just absurd that this happened. It just all of a sudden just went blue. Yeah. Huh. I I did I didn't do anything. <laughs> I didn't hit a button. I wasn't trying to start a program. I was looking there, reading my notes, and suddenly they were gone. Well, that's what you get for having to watch The Big Show, Undertaker, and Jericho in a three-way. Then why didn't it happen to you? It crashed your laptop. <laughs> All right, anyway, this women's match here. It went, I actually timed this, because I thought for sure we'd have an elimination match that was over in five minutes. Nope. Lasted ten. Came down to Michelle, Mickey, and Molina. Let's think about this for a while. One heel against two baby faces. First off, that's kind of fucked up. So then Michelle is beating the crap out of Mickey James, and Melina is standing on the apron. And I thought, well, that's kind of backwards, you'd think. So Michelle finally gets, or I'm sorry, Mickey finally gets hot tagged to Melina. Melina runs wild and uh, and pins Michelle with the code red. So after the entire deal. On Friday, with Mickey James and Layla and Michelle, neither Layla nor Michelle were pinned by Mickey James in this match. No, or even beaten. <laughs> no, she didn't, like hit a move and then Melina pinned her. No, nope. no, they. In fact, they really barely mentioned it. They talked about it for a while in commentary. Lawler apparently thought it was funny. Cole didn't. Lawler may be the only one, but uh, yeah, the, the, it, this was the deal. It was mostly Michelle working over Mickey James for a while, and then Melina getting to make the comeback because, I don't know, who cares about Melina? Why, why, why is Melina pinning Michelle? What does that lead to? So this accomplished nothing. It was not particularly entertaining. I was going to email you this possible solution here, but your computer ain't working, so... What's this possible solution? Is it complicated? Can you read it right now? Actually, hold on. Oh. Oh. Okay, um, in order to PXC boot, right, what is it? Um, why am I doing this on the air? I don't understand this at all. I have no idea. But <laughs> there, there, there was a, a potential solution, but, um, oh well. It doesn't cut your mustard? Or worry what? about that later. I don't understand it. I see. I'm not a computer guy, everybody. Neither am I. So then we had the main event, which was Cena, Triple H, and Sean. <laughs> can't believe this happened on the air, actually. I can, but I can't. Cena, Triple H, and Sean for the WWE title. This was interesting in that the build for this was nothing but goofy comedy. Just one... I can hear that fan in my headphones, too. It's the amazing thing. And the laptop? Yeah. Should I shut it down? Move it away from the mic a little bit. It's fucking six oh, feet it from the mic. down there. Are you drinking? I'm drinking water. Oh. Yeah, the... Uh, they build this up with nothing but goofy comedy. And then they do the match, and it's like deadly serious from bell to bell. And then on Raw the next night, it's back, back to, to goofy comedy. comedy again. It amazes me. Like, I guess in a way, if you're a person that buys all the pay-per-views, if you're one of the, the stupid 110,000 that buys every single WWE pay-per-view, then at least you get rewarded every time. But for people that don't, there's absolutely no reason to buy these pay-per-views. There's absolutely no reason to know that you missed awesome matches on this pay-per-view. We used to talk about this with TNA all the time. Back, yeah. Back when, the, back when TNA had awesome pay-per-views every month. And then they would have shitty TV shows still. And we would talk about, you know, there are probably wrestling fans out there who would like these pay-per-views, but they never see them because they see the shitty TV show and they don't buy the pay-per-view. Yeah, you look at Impact and it's like, there were eight minutes of wrestling in the first hour. Mm -hmm. And you're like, who the fuck would buy a pay-per-view when you get eight minutes of wrestling in the first hour on television? Right. That's kind of an exaggeration. And, 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 And I said, 
even if you enjoy this show, if you happen to enjoy what Impact is, then if you bought the pay-per-view, you may be disappointed because you would not get Impact. Yeah. And that's what the story of this feud is because the pre-match and post-match, the, the pre-match build and post-match resolution were completely different than the match itself. But it was a good match. It was a good match. They did a whole bunch of uh, deals at the finish. Cena hit the FU, too tired to cover. Sean and Cena brawled, or both crawled to cover Hunter. Hunter kicked out. Bunch of finishes. Everybody hit a move on each other. And finally, Hunter went for the pedigree on Cena. Sean super kicked Hunter. Cena gave Sean the uh, FU on Hunter for the pin. Somehow that reads pedigree. Not sure how that slipped past the censors here. And uh, that was that. Three and three quarter stars. Good main event. Really good main event, actually. Yeah. But uh, a good main event on a show that uh, nobody purchased, I'm afraid. Indeed. The, the other great spot was Sean super kicked Cena, who took a big dramatic bump, and then Sean super kicked Hunter. And in the process, Sean fell out of the ring, and Hunter sold it, but he collapsed on top of Cena. And everyone thought that was it. They thought this was going to be the finish. And so when Cena kicked out, they were all big and happy. And that was dramatic. And other than that, the the you know Hunter sold a super kick forever, the, the initial super kick forever, and Sean it was basically a one on one with Cena and Sean, and then Sean got put through the table by Hunter, and it was Hunter versus Cena for a long time, and then they just did all the three way stuff at the end, and it worked. Um, it, it, the advantage of having no clear direction is that it made any finish believable. So they believed Hunter would be about to pin Cena, and they also believed Cena could pin Hunter. So all all the near falls were believable and had drama. And then Cena won at the end, and everyone went home happy. Except, I guess, the DX fans. 